Good morning everybody, I hope you're all doing super super well and keeping super entertained and sane during this time. So today I thought I would do a more wearable look. I haven't done a talk through video or even just a wearable look in the last few videos so I thought I'm going to sit down with you guys today, I'm going to do a kind of Kim Kardashian inspired look. I just love how her makeup looks, I haven't done her, I haven't done a celebrity makeup look like inspired makeup look in forever and I also haven't done Kim Kardashian before so I thought let's give it a whirl plus it just gives me an excuse to talk with you guys catch up see how you're all doing but yeah without further ado let's get to this face the best <laughs> don't mind the change in lighting it's a little bit like semi overcast and it's windy which is not my favorite combination for filming so Kim's skin is very matte. Like I don't really see her with like this super glowy, dewy kind of base. So I'm going to go in with my mattifying primer. This is from 100% Pure. I love it because it is a natural product. So it's actually good for your skin. It's 100% natural and 100% vegan as well. And it's 100% running out on me. <laughs> Come on. Come on. So it's just going to mattify the skin. I feel like it fills in my pores a little bit as well. I also like it, like I said, because it is natural. So you know that what you're putting on your skin isn't going to be damaging it or causing premature aging or anything like that from all the chemicals. And then I put it a little bit on my neck as well. Don't mind this bad boy. He was so fierce a couple of days ago, but I've been putting tea tree oil on it and it's really been helping it like heal up quite quickly which is good so i'm going off like this picture of kim i mean like there's 101,000 different pictures <laughs> you could go off but i really like this one Oop. and it shows a bit fair bit of her makeup and the look she's wearing is really nice i tried to kind of match her suit but that didn't go to plan <laughs> so her skin is flawless af so i don't want any of these really intense kind of breakouts or pigmentation showing through these ones are healed up pretty well but I just need to cover them up just a smidge bit so I'm going to take my color corrector from NYX and I'm literally just putting a smidge bit on you don't need too much of this in the past I have used a little too much in my opinion looking back but at the time I thought it was a perfect amount and just on these little bad boys over here it does feel so good to be talking to you guys again though like honestly I've missed this connection <laughs> for foundation today I want something pretty flawless so I'm going to take my what is this perfecting liquid foundation from Airbon and just applying it to the back of my hand first for me I do like to apply it to the back of my hand first rather than having like all this product sitting on my face and not being able to blend it out so at least like I can pump it onto my hand and apply where needed and if I need to like pick up any more while I'm blending it out I can like it's better to keep adding rather than having too much and not having anywhere to blend it like you've used too much product you know what I mean so do you guys want me to keep doing those really like overly dramatic very artistic kind of makeup looks or do you want me to do kind of looks like this where they're more wearable you know neutral colors that everyone can kind of use I just like doing those looks because it pushes myself and I can actually see you know it's nice to actually see I can accomplish like a very artist artistic <laughs> makeup look you know so a little technique I've liked using lately to kind of give myself a little bit more coverage like you can see I have a little bit of redness and stuff showing through and it also gives a little bit of tonage to the skin. It's a technique I liked being using for a more full coverage look. So I actually grab a lighter foundation. This is my Fit Me Matte and Poreless Foundation in the shade 122 Creamy Beige. I'm just going to pop it on kind of places that I'd usually like highlight a little bit on their face. Of course you can do this with a concealer as well. It's just not as harsh as a concealer I feel. Like it just adds a little bit more tone. And I'm just buttoning that in. So for concealer today, I'm actually not going to highlight. I'm just going to grab something that's the same colour as my natural skin tone. This is the Medium Moyen shade from the Instant Age Rewind concealers from Maybelline. And I'm just putting some under the eyes, just on the inner corner part. I don't like having too much concealer actually like sitting underneath my eyes. Otherwise it just cakes up and you get like, well I find I just get so much creasing. And I'll just conceal over 
any break cuts I want to, you know, further cover up. That's why I'm taking something the same colour as my skin tone. If I was using a highlighting concealer and went over my breakouts with that, girl, that is not what you're going for. You're going to highlight those breakouts even more, which is not what you're going for. And then, of course, blend it out. I don't go over the top of the breakout. I just go around it. So next, I'm going to grab my pressed powder. This is from Raw Cosmetics their natural pressed powder again I like it for its natural makeup properties I'm gonna take a dry beauty sponge and just pat that over the top of just anywhere that I want to set that concealer and over the breakouts I feel like this is a great powder as well because it actually provides more coverage to the skin whereas like a translucent one like nothing there would be no coverage to it Okay, so I'm actually going to cream contour today. Cream contouring looks so natural and so good on the skin. I'm really getting back into it. I've been into like cream bronzing a lot, but not cream contouring. So I'm going to take this middle shade from my Australis AC on Tour Contouring and Highlight Kit. Just a little Real Techniques crease brush. I actually like this to like get right there on the cheekbone. I have done a more in-depth contouring video. If you would like to check it out, I'll leave that linked for you. It's a nice cool tone so it's good to contour with because it creates a more shadow effect rather than it being a warm tone brown which would look more bronzy. And just blending that in with my beauty sponge always blending on an upward angle to keep the contour. So to warm up the complexion like Kim is just naturally so tanned it's so beautiful. I'm going to give myself a bit of a tan to a bit of bronzy color to the skin because it is still a bit matte and flat so I'm going in with my very well loved NYX contour and highlight kit I'm just gonna lightly bronze my cheeks just a little bit so we are going to go in with blush so you don't need too much just a little bit to warm them up like I said and she is super 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 bronzed on her forehead so I'm going to go a little bit more ham with the bronzer there than what I usually would so I'm going to take some of that bronzing powder, tap off any excess of course. I'm just going to slightly give a little bit of a nose contour just because her nose looks pretty snatched in the photo right up from the brow bone like right up from the brow all the way down and of course the tip as well and then I just go in with my sponge and just diffuse it a little bit so it's not so harsh I also like to put some right in here, kind of right in this kind of shadowy bit here, this crevice. I just find it makes my lips look fuller, like more pouted, and also under the bottom to make them look pouted as well. So before I go ahead and highlight, I'm going to do my brows. I know brows is very much a personal preference, even though Kim's are quite structured, I do like mine pretty dang like crisp and cut so I'm going to go ahead and do my brows off camera I will leave down below um, a couple of my brow tutorials that I have done in the past but it is up to you like I said brows are very much a personal preference so it's up to you how you want to fill yours in hello <laughs> so I'm back again these are the brows like I said I like them quite fierce and like snatched I just like really quite bold brows so next I'm going to move on with like the blush and We'll finish off the skin with the highlight at the end. So I'll just do blush and then move on to the eyes. So for blush today, I'm thinking of using this beautiful, like, rosy tone pink blush just for, like, the cheeks and things. Hers is more of, like, a deep brown mauvey tone, but that wouldn't really suit my complexion as much. So I'm going in with this kind of more rosy tone one. It's still quite, like, a deep colour on the, like, cheek, so it does have that kind of resemblance to her look. But not just, like, not as, like... Moby. And I like to put it on the back end of the cheeks. Hers aren't on the apples either. They're on the backs to kind of chill out her face a little bit more. So it's more on the kind of contoured side. Gives her that nice angular lifted look to the face. I always just like to go in with a beauty sponge just to soften anything. If I've gone too hard on the blush or anything, I always just like to soften it just a bit so it just melts into the skin a bit more. So I'm going to leave the skin for now and do the eyes. Kim's always got that kind of like similar look in a lot of her makeup looks. It's always like those brown kind of smoky eye with a little bit of a pop on the inner corner, like a little bit of a bright tone. And it looks quite matte. It doesn't really look shimmery. So I'm going to keep it matte 
on the most part today. So for my transition shade today I'm going to take this lighter brown tone from the Jaclyn Hill palette and just take that through my outer crease and outer corner as well. I want it to be a very faded, very soft blend between all the colours. It just looks so perfect on her eyes. I want it to very much be just a nice melt between all the shades. Next, dipping into the slightly deeper brown tone on the same fluffy crease brush from Zoeva. I'm just going to deepen up that outer crease area. Again, really blowing it out on the outer corner. So it's really smoky. Next on a petite crease brush, I'm going to dip into the shade Mocha from the Jaclyn Hill palette. And again, just further deepening up that outer corner. And again, going back in with that previous brown to soften the edges. And just kind of blow it out a little bit if need be. Finally, on a pencil brush, taking this deepest brown shade called Central Park. And I'm going to apply that to the very outer point of the eye. Creating like a smoky liner kind of look into the outer crease. So just running it along the outer third of the lash line and curving it up into that outer crease. For the inner corner and inner third of the eye, I'm going to take this beautiful kind of creamy white shade from the same palette and I'm going to place that, like I said, on that inner corner and inner third. And looking at the picture more, I need to bring some of that brown into this inner third of like the, the crease kind of area too just because that's how her look her looks kind of are they smoke out and around and kind of connect up to that nose bone just there so I'm just taking whatever's left on the brush and bringing that in and it just changes the eye shape slightly it gives more feline effect because they're just keeping it to this portion here we're not touching the inner corner at all for lashes, I'm going to go in with the Icona Lashes from their Midnight Collection in the style Make Him Miss Me. And these are what the lashes look like with the look. Sorry guys, I'm doing a voiceover for this bit. There was a bit of background noise, so I thought I'd just do a quick voiceover for the rest of the eye makeup. So next, what we're going to do is grab a nude eye curl and apply that to your waterline to really open up the eyes. I feel like Kim K, she may have had a bit of that brown smoky look underneath her lash line, but I feel like her eyes are still quite open. Then I'm going in with this brown eye curl and creating that more smoky look. So I'm applying it to the outer third of my bottom lash line, not on the waterline. Then I'm going to smudge it out with some of this brown eyeshadow that we used before. And I'm just basically smudging that along the bottom lash line about two thirds of the way across. Then I'm going to take these two lighter brown tones that we use and just going to blend that further just to make it nice and smoky and also connect it up to the lid area so there's no like gap or anything like that. You can make this as smoky or as little smoky as you'd like. I don't think her bottom lash line's that smoky so I didn't actually make it like crazy crazy smoky. Just kept it a little bit, you know, just a little bit. <laughs> Then I'm going in with a white matte eyeshadow. I just felt like she had a little bit of a brow bone highlight, but it wasn't anything crazy, and it did look matte, so I kept it matte with this look. But you can use a shimmer if you want to change it up. And then it is now time for the lips. Okay, guys, so I'm back to talking through. Sorry about that. It was just a bit of background noise, but I'm back. So once I've done the eyes, we're going to move on to the lips. She's got kind of like a, she's got a nude lip but it's very ombre, it's like brown on the outside, nudey pink, or even just a peachy pinky nude on the uh, inner of the lip. So that's what I'm going to do. So of course I love this as a lip liner, I'm taking the Espresso Eye Coal from Makeup Geek and I'm going to line my lips with that. And just ombre the outer points. Then I'm going to go in with this Pale Plethora Pink Liquid Lip over top. And then just to give it a little bit more of a peachier kind of pink colour, I'm going to go over with Jungle Peach from Revlon. And something like this should do. I just like the ombre, like gosh, it makes your lips look so much fuller. So, so nice. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, now I'm going to do a little bit of a glow, just a little smidgen on the cheeks her highlight is a little bit more focused on like the nose and things so i might do a more like intense highlight on like the chin nose 
forehead, like the very center of the face, but I will give the cheeks a little bit of something, something. So I'm taking this Folklore Highlighting Quad, and I'm taking this beautiful kind of bronzy tone. It looks orange in the pan, but it's actually really bronzy. And I'm just going to bronze the cheeks with that a little bit. Just a little bit. Also hit the center and the chin as well. Oh, girl. I'm not a chin highlighter usually, but I mean, it looks like she is, so I don't have to be today. Next, taking the brightest highlight from the palette, I'm going to highlight like my nose and cupid bow and stuff with that. And then just blend that out to diffuse it a little bit. And that, my ladies and gents, is the finished makeup look for this Kim K inspired makeup. So guys, this wraps up today's makeup tutorial. I really do hope you enjoyed it. I love how this look turned out, even just for like an everyday glam. I'm 100% living for it. I haven't worn something like sexy and wearable in a little while, so it's nice to change it up. But yeah, let me know if you guys do want me to do like chit chat tutorials like this, where it's more like getting ready with you guys. Very wearable. I mean, it's still glam, but it's like a wearable glam look. Or do you guys rather see like those intense, really intricate, creative makeup looks? So let me know, honey. Otherwise, I love you all so much. Thank you for sticking through to the end, and I'll see you in my next video. Mwah. Bye!